Hello everyone. I am wanting to do a requested video actually on this concept of the spoon theory because although I've talked about this, I don't think I've actually gone through and actually like explained this scenario very well. I've come up with some notes and I'm going to be taking you through this on how I would sit down with someone and take them through this exercise. I don't think people really realize how much effort it can take to make it look like we're normal. So I've actually come with a f up with a few examples here and I want to take you through a couple of different scenarios because I think this will be really helpful in the end. For those of you who aren't aware, the spoon theory was first used by another person to explain what it's like trying to manage fatigue with chronic illness. And although I actually don't often anymore have as many problems with energy as what I used to, I still actually have this apply to me. So I still actually do deal with some, I guess, side effects, I guess, of still having some limited energy. The spoon theory is just a way of explaining this using basically a finite value. You can do this, I think, in multiple ways, but I'm going to take you through how I would actually explain this to one of my loved ones. So I've come up with some examples of some of the things that I do every day. These are kind of more just the kind of everyday things. It's a summer version as well because I have the garden in this as an example. I've come up with about of an approximation of how many spoons I would have on a day in three different scenarios. So one is like, I'm feeling what I call my normal. So I'm feeling relatively good. And I would even call this, or I've referred to this in the past as my baseline. These daily spoons, I find even now, still do vary actually quite a bit day to day and depending on how I'm actually feeling. There's a difference between when I'm feeling pretty good compared to like when I have my period. And I mean, I think all of us ladies or those of us who menstruate, if you want to be more politically correct, we deal with a lowered amount of energy as it is around our period. I think that's why when I went on my meditation retreat, I absolutely loved the fact that I was menstruating during that because it actually allowed me to relax in the proper way that is kind of meant to be relaxed in that case. With my period, I tend to have fewer spoons as it is, but throw in the fact that I'm usually feeling worse during this time of the month, just overall with my migraines is also another important consideration. And then I put just a rougher day. So like I'm having migraine symptoms. It could be from something like a low pressure system is causing the barometric pressure to drop or you know, I'm not doing so well with maintaining my lifestyle or diet or there's like so many different factors that can go into migraines that it's really, it, you almost need a separate video for that list as well, which I think I do actually have on the channel. Just type in Ashley Stewart and, you know, migraine symptoms, I think, and it should come up. Unlike before, I would actually need to like physically almost have a nap or to sleep in order to regain or gain those spoons back. So, you know how I say, a, I like to use a battery example with this because it's like you start out with like, let's say you're at the start of your day, you have 85 or 80% of your battery, kind of like a device that's uh, reached kind of close to the end of its lifetime. And then let's say you do something that drains it down to 60%, right? But then you want to go back up. Well, the only way to do that is to rest or recharge. Now, unlike with the spoons, it's kind of more fixed. I find that my battery example works a little bit better because I can actually recharge to a certain point now. When I was at my worst though, it would take a nap or other types of, you know, resting in order for me to regain essentially the spoons. So if I take a proper rest, I can actually stretch what I consider a good day, which I actually labeled as 12 spoons. With proper rest, I can actually turn a 12 spoon day into 16 to 18, which is I would say almost the ideal thing for me as of this point. And not only does it vary upon how I feel when I wake up, but it can vary on what I can do around work based upon what I'm doing at work as well. I am so conditioned now at my job that as long as I'm not completely going crazy, 
I have been conditioned to be on my feet. I've been conditioned to be physically active there. And I actually like it because it does keep me in a little bit better shape than if I was just at a desk. Now, that being said, some of my stuff is quite of a mental task as well. Although I may not be doing something that's as physical, if I'm doing mental work and managing migraine symptoms, it can be just as hard to manage those mental struggles as it is the physical struggles. So it's not, the spoons don't just apply to physical things. I think it'll be easier to come up with physical examples, but the mental stuff, the thing that does take the brain work when you're dealing with headache conditions like IIH and migraines is going to be as much of a factor. I am want to go through what I came up with because you can take this in so many different scenarios if you come up with your own list and what you think it takes you because this is going to vary quite a bit not only depending with where you are in your own journey but how you're feeling in the moment as well. So I came up with a list of activities and chores that I tend to do every day and I want to put this on the podcast, so I'm going to explain this. But I think for those of you on the podcast, it's going to be the most beneficial for you to come and actually watch the video on YouTube or one of the other platforms. Obviously, when I go to work, that's going to kill a majority of my spoons in the day. I think I put it at 8, which is probably out of 12 is honestly quite accurate. Although I tend to do like the get ready for work, shower before work, you know, all of those things that can take one to two spoons and it can add up. It comes into factor in the period after work. So for example, right now, I'm actually just off of a shift not that long ago. So filming this video is actually taking more out of me because I just got off of work, even though I didn't work a full day today. So I hope that kind of makes a little bit more sense. Dishwasher, two spoons, make bed, three spoons. And the reason why I put make bed actually at more is because when you make a bed and you have your bed in a corner, it can actually be a lot harder to make your bed. It can be a lot more physical of a task. So I would say it's two to three, but it's gonna depend on like, if you have a bed in the middle of the room, I don't think it's gonna be as hard as if it's in a corner and you're like fighting with the corner sheets. Garden, or this is like an example of like weeding or working out in the garden. I put it as five spoons. It's gonna be very, very close to an actual work day. So obviously I'm not gonna go to work and do weeding in the garden on the same day. That would completely wipe me and probably knock me out for a couple of days. Shower, two to three. People actually mistake this for the fact that they don't realize that it's something that we actually have to take into consideration having you know chronic illness it showering can take a lot out of you showering will also depend not only on you but i find that showering can take more out of me when i'm not feeling well i actually used to be surprised actually at how much i would feel after a shower when i was at my worst like it was horrible how much energy it took out of me so am i on a worse day or if i'm feeling worse the shower is going to vary i put it as two because average i would say it's two but if i'm feeling a lot worse it's going to be a lot more spoons get ready for work things like putting on deodorant brushing hair putting my hair up which putting the hair up can really hurt actually if I'm having a bad day. Brushing teeth, all of that kind of hygiene type stuff. One spoon, I would say it doesn't really phase me anymore. Although before I would say it might. If this is something that you do actually find does affect you, it may be something that you have to put into your spoons in your example. Like I said, this is going to vary a lot between people and depending on where you are in your particular journey. Editing video, two to three usually. It's a lot of mental work depending on the video. It's actually why I tend to focus on live streams now because there's so much less editing. Filming video can be up there, so I have it as five spoons, but actually using this little gimbal thing, it hasn't been too bad yet. I have make a lunch because there are a few different times that I actually have to take a lunch with me. This is one to two. It usually doesn't take as much effort for me. Making a lunch doesn't take as much effort actually because I tend to lean a lot on leftovers so it's not like I'm doing any extra cooking or anything. And then general cleaning can be up there again with like garden work. It can take a lot depending on what you're doing in when you're cleaning. So like washing floors, doing laundry, all of that kind of stuff depending on 
not only where you are, but like what you're doing, it's going to vary quite a bit. Like I said, daily spoons generally average here is about 12. And again, it's gonna depend on the day. With periods, I would say it's around nine to 10. And let's say with a period, and then I've got those other factors such as, you know, the weather or other things that are kind of bubbling up and making my bucket a lot more full, it's going to vary significantly in those particular situations. So I actually did come up with a scenario here. So I have work, cook, shower, and make lunch. So let's say I had a work day that I need to make a lunch and I had to shower on that particular day before work and then I have to come home and cook and make a meal, which I mean, this isn't totally out there. And on a good day, so I put eight plus three plus two plus two equals 15. So obviously my daily spoons, it's over already. But let's say that I get up, I do my meditation. My meditation doesn't really take any spoons. My meditation is so natural that I don't consider taking any spoons at all, actually. I usually shower after my meditation, so that's two spoons, so now I'm down 10. But then I rest, and these days, I can bring it back up to 12 or 13 with enough rest. This particular situation is why I tend to give myself a lot of rest from the point that I have a shower, to the point where I'm going to work. So this is why I like to have my time in the morning, really take my time because it allows me to replenish those spoons. Now, if I'm trying to do all of this and it's a bad day, this is a little bit of a rougher situation for sure. So I will wait a little bit of period again before making a lunch. It's usually about, you know, 45 minutes, an hour before I have to be at work that I'll make my lunch. And just again, just to allow myself to rest and all of that and then go to work, come home, have to cook a meal for supper, right? Or dinner as you guys call it in the US. So although I've obviously went over my spoons for the day with 15, because I've given myself a break, I'm okay. But if you try to do that all in a row without rest, and let's say you were only taking your breaks at work, it would be not a good situation. Because I'm able to replenish, unlike before, where I didn't get that same amount of leeway from my body. Part of this I think is conditioning now, but part of it is, I think I've just figured out how to work with it basically. And so like, that's why I get up early. I take a lot of breaks because I need it in order to be able to stretch the spoons out. Let's say it's a rougher day though. I will be probably in a little bit of pain and not feeling as well by the time I get home for sure. And you know, it'll be like as easy of a supper as I can make it kind of thing because I just don't have the energy to cook an elaborate meal. You could use this list or come up with your own and do the same thing. People don't see how much effort it can take to actually deal with some of these things. I hope that helps a little bit, kind of explain how you can not only do this exercise yourself, but what I have to do you know, manage in order to be able to do everything that I do. I think a lot of people looking at me don't realize the amount of work and it's not really planning, but it is kind of to a point that goes into how I manage my day. Even still now, like I have leeway compared to what I did. And this kind of, you know, demonstrates physically to me why I wasn't able to work for so long too. But I just wish people would understand the work that goes into managing just an average day where most people, the things that you're doing, you like don't even think about it. Now imagine if I had kids and after work, not only am I cooking, but I'm running kids around to different activities, that would completely wipe me out. I come home guys and I am, I'm pretty wiped, honestly. I'm used to it, so it may not show it that way, but that's the honest truth. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you give it a like. If you're enjoying my content overall, please hit the subscribe button and all of that lovely YouTuber stuff. If you're on Facebook, make sure that you hit the like and follow and come join the supporter tribe on Locals. Oh, podcast, make sure you subscribe and leave a review. Other than that, thanks for joining me and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye everyone.